Hello and welcome to today's Quick Smarts lesson titled The Most Vital Reason for Managers to Delegate. My name is Paul Puckridge. I'm the National Training Manager at the Success Institute. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's short Quick Smarts lesson. I've left my mobile phone number there on the screen as well as my email address and if you would like to know more about how we may be able to assist you and your colleagues become better at delegating or any one of a number of other ways that we assist organizations, it would be my pleasure to talk to you. So let me start by asking you a question. Do you need to see a lift in your own effectiveness as a manager or leader? Do you feel that although you're very busy when you get to work, in fact you probably come in early or stay back late, don't take time for lunch every day, you're not as productive or as effective as you really want to be? And that's one of the main considerations when looking at ways of developing your delegation skills. So what if you could find more time? What if you could get more done? What if you could empower your people to take on greater responsibilities for their own work as well as some of the things that you no longer have the time to do? And ultimately, what if you felt as a result of delegating you became a better manager? Good question. What if? So today we're going to talk about learning how to better delegate because at some point we've all delegated whether we do it very well or not so well, we need to understand the fundamental reasons why delegation is important. So let me ask you a question. Have you been to Egypt? Have you seen the Pyramids of Giza? Now I know what you're thinking. What has this got to do with delegation? Well, it has everything to do with delegation, but maybe not what you think. I want you to look at that image of the pyramid, or at least one side, a triangle, because this is going to help us understand the three perspectives of managing in the workplace today and why it's critical to be a manager who understands how to release things that we no longer have the time to do and to delegate more effectively. So let's take this side profile of the pyramid and let's break it into three. And we have a base, a middle and a top. The first consideration is that as a manager you have what we call a strategic perspective to your role. The second layer is your tactical perspective and the third layer is your operational perspective. In other words, as a manager you're, you're just not coming into work and reading email and attending meetings and talking to staff and coaching and on the phone to clients. There are three layers to your role regardless of what your title suggests. So when we talk about strategic perspective, what we're referring to is the fundamental reason that you're on the payroll. In other words, what is it that you have to achieve within your department or your team or by yourself within the next 12 months? You see, each one of us are given a series of KPIs, of goals, of projects, of activities that we're accountable for to deliver over a 12-month period. That is why most organizations have annual performance appraisals because as part of the appraisal process, as part of the idea of sitting down with your manager at least once a year, you and your manager discuss what your team's goals, your objectives, your KPIs are, and they're the things that you have to uh, achieve. And so we call this your strategic perspective. In other words, why your job exists, why you're on the payroll. The trouble is, if you have a very large sales goal, or a large series of objectives. It could be to roll out a, a new computer program throughout an entire organization. It could be to develop um, systems or processes. It could be to manage a marketing area or whatever uh, aspect of uh, the department or organization you're working in. We all have a strategic perspective. But the challenge is how do we achieve all of that? Well, we can't in a day or even a week or a month. And that's why as managers we have to take our strategic and break it down into monthly or quarterly tactical perspectives. Now, depending on what, what month this is that you're watching this lesson, you will be expected to achieve a series of monthly targets. Now, whether they're key performance indicators, whether they're objectives that your organization has set, or whether you've set them for your team, maybe you're managing a project right now, or multiple projects, and so by the end of this month, your project has to be at a certain point within the timeline. 
it could be a milestone. In other words, by the end of this month, we have to have achieved a certain uh, part of the project. We have to have met a certain part of the milestones. Does that make sense? And finally, we have what we call the operational perspective, which is what is happening today and this week. So if we think about it, what's happening today and this week impacts what happens this quarter, which over a period of 12 uh, months or four quarters impacts what we achieve or don't achieve strategically. And one of the problems that I see in many organizations is managers come into work and they get caught up in their email, their phone calls, their meetings. In fact, some managers have so many multiple meetings throughout the day, they don't... uh, get to the surface for air until four o'clock in the afternoon. In other words, they've spent the entire day in meetings. And they wonder why they're under stress to get things done. Because what we do every day operationally affects what we achieve tactically and ultimately what our targets are strategically. So let's have a look at the bottlenecks. So when we talk about strategic perspective, what we're really referring to are things like change, uh, strategic thinking, business strategy, setting directions, growth, long-term business planning. Are they the sort of things that you know that you're on the payroll to achieve? And tactically, we have monthly planning, project work, mentoring. I'm sure part of your role is to mentor certain people within your team, especially those people whom you want to develop. Or maybe it's coaching, either formal or informal. There are some issues that you want to uh, challenge or change within your team, therefore you want to coach. Maybe there are things that you are changing within your team, but that requires monthly uh, change processes. Part of being a tactical manager is to take time throughout your month to reflect and, if need be, to change the direction of where your team is heading. In other words, if it's the middle of the month and you know that you're behind your targets, you're not achieving your KPIs, then you might have to change what you do for the next couple of weeks or put more emphasis into certain people. Does that make sense? And of course, month by month, when we come into work as an effective manager, we have to be making sure that either ourselves or our team or the area that we lead is working towards those monthly key performance indicators. Now operationally, week by week and day by day, we have meetings, we have problems to solve, we have phone calls, we have bushfires to put out, uh, we have reports to write, we have email to read and respond to. In fact, don't get me started about email. Mind you, we have a very good program for helping manage email called Zero Inbox, which I won't get into now. We're constantly communicating operationally. We're also working on things that are urgent, but not necessarily important, and we're working on tasks that are not urgent and not important. So what does all this mean? Well, it means that a lack of delegation finds managers spending too much time on the stuff. What do I mean by the stuff? It's all that stuff happening hour by hour, day by day, week by week. In other words, the bottleneck is in the operational area of our of our roles. And we're not spending enough time on the tactical or the monthly or the quarterly and the strategic issues that are facing our roles, that are facing the challenges within our team and of course our business. Does that make sense? And I think if you look at yourself and the reason you're watching this is because you know that you need to become more effective at delegating. It's because day by day, hour by hour, sometimes even minute by minute, we're getting so caught up in the minutia that we're not getting traction on those bigger picture activities. And that's why we need to release some of them to our team members or to other departments and to start to focus more on the bigger picture at least the tactical, because when we achieve things month by month, it means we have a much greater chance and control over achieving what we're expected to do strategically or annually. Delegating effectively is hopefully going to free you up of some of these operational tasks. Not all, but some. Now in saying that, being good at delegating also means that you become good at saying no. For example, when was the last time you said to a colleague, I can't attend that meeting? 
or can I send someone else? Or could you please give me an agenda before we have the meeting? Or uh, you're saying that this meeting will last two hours, well today I can give you one hour. Or may I be part of the initial start of the meeting, which is where I uh, need to be, but then after my part is over, may I then go back to my um, team and help them achieve what has to be done. You see, sometimes we can get so caught up in the minutia, in the operational, that we fail to achieve those tactical and strategic activities. And that's where the bottleneck is. And that's why delegation is so important. Because what we're doing is we're saying to ourselves, what is it I'm doing day by day, hour by hour, or week by week, that I can teach or train someone in my team to do more effectively? that I can train someone to do to increase their skills or their job satisfaction, which is allowing me an, ex an extra hour a day or an extra couple of hours a day to work on those monthly tasks and targets and projects that will help me and the team get to our end destination a little bit more easily, with less stress, and to feel in greater control. It's all about releasing some of the operational to focus on the tactical. Because I guarantee if you were to write down where all of your challenges are, why you're working so hard, why you're coming in early, staying back late, are you catching public transport and you're still checking email? Even at night time, is some of that a delegation issue? Is some of that an, an inability to say no or to switch on or switch off? And that's a different conversation. Because ultimately, it isn't about how many hours you work, it's the quality of the work that you put into the hours. As a manager, it isn't about how much you do, it's what you do. And unfortunately, because we live in this age where everything is instantaneous, where we are expected to multitask, we often confuse activity with achievement. You know, you can have 50 things on your to-do list but if there are things on your list that aren't moving your team towards your tactical or your monthly targets, then you're going to end up feeling frustrated. And if what you're achieving isn't helping you reach your KPIs monthly, then I can guarantee you're going to be under a lot of pressure to hit your strategic objectives. Learning how to delegate means that you, re you release some of your time to focus on the tactical and strategic objectives of your role. And the double win is that delegating helps you develop your team skills and enables them to become less reliant on you. That's another issue which I'm sure you've observed either now or in the past that when your people don't feel empowered they keep coming to you to solve their problems. There's this bottleneck where they don't do things because they're waiting for you or you're the only person who can make a certain decision. I believe that delegating and learning how to delegate to other team members, because that's really what we're talking about here today, is going to maximize everyone's productivity within your team. And by doing that, we know through research that when people are working on the things they enjoy, when people feel trusted, when your team members feel like their work has meaning, that they're actually going places and, and moving somewhere, they enjoy their work better. And what happens when people feel that they're being productive because they're enjoying their work and there's greater meaning in their work? Well, we know that productivity increases. And you're maximizing everyone's skills. As you can see there, the brain meter is full. So thank you for taking the time to listen and watch this little webinar today. If you'd like to know how we can really help you learn to delegate more effectively either by yourself or in your team or your organization there's my mobile 0419 yes that's me on the right hand side email p.puckridge at success.net.au and it would be my pleasure to discuss how we can help you or your other managers your team learn to release your breaks to become more effective at delegating so that's the end of today's session. Thank you so much for joining and being here, and I hope to talk to you very soon. Until then, I wish you every success.